If you're watching this video, you're probably interested in starting or scaling an online business. And you've probably heard me talk a lot about the power of SEO for growing a large, monetizable audience in a slow and steady, organic way. However, the blogging world is not all rainbows and unicorns. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Blogging is hard work and a long-term game. And for every success story you hear, there are 10 other stories of burnout and meager results. In fact, according to some stats curated by Ahrefs, 33% of bloggers report making no income at all from their websites. Now, why is that, you might ask? Why is it that one out of three bloggers are putting in the work and not getting concrete results? In this video, I'm going to review seven reasons why so many bloggers never make a dime and give you suggestions on what to do instead so that you can be part of the two thirds of bloggers making at least a part-time living online. Reason number one why someone's not making money from their blog, they don't have a clear monetization strategy. This one is so huge. It's an issue I see all the time with newer bloggers and online business owners. They're all in on the idea of making money online. They understand how blogging can be a super effective way to bring people to their websites, and they get super, super excited. They just jump right in, creating content willy-nilly without a clear plan for what they're creating and why. Because getting traffic is just step one. The bigger, more important question is why do you want the traffic? What are you trying to do with it? And how does growing your audience with SEO tie into your overall business goals? And the biggest mistake that I see in this area is that people are trying to monetize in every way all at once. They want ads, they want affiliate income, they want to work with brands, they want to sell ebooks, they want to sell an online course, they might launch a membership. Oh, and they also want to work with you one on one. And that is a recipe for burnout and lack of results. While yes, it is possible to make money via all of these avenues, it's not possible to see rapid success in all of them all at once. You need to get crystal clear on which monetization method you want to optimize for first and set your sights on that goal until you accomplish it. Once you've met your goal, then you can build systems. You can start to outsource a bit and then you can tackle the next income stream. I mean, if you don't know where you're trying to go, how can you get there, right? And since this is such a common problem point for bloggers, I've actually added a lesson on this inside my SEO Made Simple course and added a special bonus for my students where I walk you through each of the three main pathways for making money from your blog and exactly what you should focus on in each stage in order to see results as quickly as possible. I'll summarize that information right now for you on the podcast, but just know that I go way more in depth with people inside my course. So I've come up with three major blogging business models that I see food, nutrition, and wellness bloggers fall into the majority of the time. Number one is the publisher model. Number two is the online business model. And number three is the services model. And the key point, if you're listening to this right now, is that it's really important that you pick one of these monetization models from the start and focus wholeheartedly on that model. Because the type of content that you create and the reasons why you're creating content in the first place are dramatically different between the models. And mixing and matching them is just going to be a recipe for confusion and poor results. So let's go over each one a little bit more in depth. So blogging business model number one, that's the publisher model. This is you if you are purely interested in creating content and you don't really want to create a product or sell anything to your audience. You envision creating a website that's an amazing go-to resource for your ideal reader in your niche, and you plan to monetize it somewhat passively with things like display ads, affiliate links, and maybe some sponsored content down the road as well. For example, many food, fashion, and travel bloggers fall into this category. You visit their website for helpful tips and content, but you probably aren't like buying a course or signing up for coaching or anything like that. Another larger example of this model is websites like Healthline, who make millions of dollars per year from content monetized with ads and affiliate links. And for this model to work, you need traffic and lots of it. For ads, you get paid based on how many people are viewing the ads each month. So you need at least 50,000 visits per month in order to qualify for a higher end ad network like Mediavine. 
Once you're in, you'll probably earn at least $20 per 1,000 monthly sessions, which means that you can expect to start bringing in around $1,000 and up in ad revenue every single month once you get accepted. So if you do the math, that means conservatively, you can expect to earn $10,000 a month from ads if you can get 500,000 people to your site every single month. And spoiler alert, it's actually a lot easier to go from 100K to 500K visitors per month than it is to go from zero to 100K. And so for many people in the publisher model, they are fully focused on ads as their initial monetization stream. And if this is you, your goal needs to be to find the highest volume keywords in your niche that you can potentially rank for and publish content on those topics at the highest frequency you can manage because the more SEO optimized content you can put out, the more chances you have to rank well and grow your traffic quickly. For reference, the students in my course who have gotten to Mediavine, it takes them on average somewhere between one and a half and two and a half years to get to the point where they can apply to Mediavine once they start taking SEO seriously. So it's definitely a longer term play. So it's even more important then that you start with the right strategy from the beginning. Otherwise, you're just going to continue to extend that timeline and no one wants that, right? And if the publisher model is what resonates with you, you can also start monetizing with affiliate links, but that requires some strategy as well. It's not just enough to randomly sprinkle links in your content when you mention a product you use. The far more effective strategy is to craft content around keywords that have purchase intent, like reviews or comparisons, so that you can get in front of people who are almost ready to buy but are just doing a bit of research first. If you integrate those types of posts into your blogging calendar and see what ends up resonating with your unique audience and niche, then you can start making some money through that stream as well. Obviously, affiliate marketing is a whole nother topic that I could talk about for hours on its own, so I'll stop there. But the point is, if you want to passively monetize your content with ads and affiliate links and not directly sell anything, you need to find the highest volume keywords you can rank for in your niche and publish as frequently as possible in order to reach your goals. And before we move on, I do want to say that if I were starting out today, I would not put all my eggs in the publisher basket because I'm slightly worried about how AI is going to impact information-focused websites. So I recommend this second business model if you're starting today. That is the online business or services model. These are models two and three kind of together. They're similar in the type of content that you need to create, whether you're trying to sell something online or sell your services online. So for this model, this is the other side of the coin, this is people who are trying to use their blog to attract potential customers to their website. And that right there is the key difference between these models. With the publisher model, it doesn't really matter who is viewing your content, right? From an ad revenue perspective, an eyeball is an eyeball, right? I mean, of course, you will naturally attract people around your niche based on the content you're creating, but if your niche is, say, Midwestern recipes, then it doesn't really matter if it's a young college student reading your meatloaf recipe or an elderly retiree, right? They're looking for your style of recipe and you're providing it. Easy peasy. You're not selling anything, so you don't need to worry so much about buying intent or creating content around pain points. You can focus mostly on informational content and see great success. And again, I just want to point out, with the coming of AI, I do think it's important that if you want to be an information source, you need to come up with original content and a brand to separate yourself from whatever AI is able to push out. So yes, I don't think the publisher model is going to go away entirely, but I think it's going to get a lot harder. So just keep that in your mind if you're trying to choose between these models right now. Uh, so I will say, though, that this is not really the case with the online business or services model. With these models, you don't want just anyone coming to your site. You need potential customers coming to your site. So let's say that you are in the PCOS space and you have an online course for people with PCOS, or you work with them one-on-one, -on -one, or you offer a group program. In this scenario, publishing a meatloaf recipe is not going to get you closer to your goal of selling out your PCOS course or fully booking out your group program. Sure, maybe your existing audience would enjoy a meatloaf recipe if you posted it, but that content is not going to help you attract more of your ideal customers who have PCOS who are looking for help. And attracting more of your ideal customers is exactly the point of publishing SEO optimized content, right? It is meant to be an audience builder first and foremost. 
So sure, a meatloaf recipe might bring thousands of people to your site every month, but if those people have absolutely no interest in PCOS, then what's the point, right? If the traffic you're getting isn't attached to a monetization goal, then it's just a vanity metric. So for the online business model, you need to intentionally create content around the topics your ideal customer is searching for related to the problems that you solve. That is how you're going to attract the right people to your website with SEO and be able to successfully sell your offerings to those people who you attract. And for the online business or services model, it's not about attracting large numbers of people, it's about attracting the right people. So even if you only attracted 100 people a month to your site with any given post, if those 100 people are almost all your ideal customers, you're going to have much better success eventually selling to them. So if you're listening and you are in the online business or services model, your goal should be to find easy to rank for keywords that your ideal customers are searching for, even if they are lower volume. So for example, the keyword magnesium for PCOS is searched about a thousand times per month and is still relatively easy to rank for. If you were able to rank at the top of page one for that keyword, it may bring in a few hundred people per month to your website who are essentially saying that they are interested in nutrition and PCOS. You can then create a super highly valuable lead magnet that these visitors couldn't resist so that a certain percentage of them will opt into your email list where you can continue to provide value and then eventually offer something for sale. See how that process is so, so different? And I found that a lot of bloggers don't understand this important distinction and end up with an extremely muddy and ineffective content plan as a result. So if this is you, I urge you to get clarity on your monetization model right now and make sure that the type of content you're publishing is in alignment with your goals. Reason number two why so many bloggers don't make money is that they don't have a clear niche. Most often, this manifests as trying to blog about a topic or topics that is way too broad. For example, women's health, wellness, travel, cooking, gut health, mental health, etc. All of these are not specific enough for new bloggers. To stand out and become an expert in something online, you need to niche way, way down. For example, instead of women's health, can you niche down into nutrition for PCOS or prenatal nutrition or baby led weaning, just as a few examples. Uh, instead of cooking, can you niche down into dairy free cooking or low sodium recipes or low FODMAP recipes? Instead of gut health, can you niche down into nutrition for IBSD or Crohn's disease or something way more specific? The idea here is that you want to become the ultimate resource on a topic. That will help you not only rank better around these topics in Google, because they better understand what you're an authority on, but also help you gain more traction from word of mouth, because you will really be serving one specific type of person as best as possible. So for example, if you blog specifically about nutrition for Crohn's disease, you are way more likely to build an audience of raving fans who will share your website with their peers, compared to if you try to blog about Crohn's, IBS, ulcerative colitis, and celiac disease all together on the same site. In the first example, every single piece of content you put out will probably be relevant to your ideal reader. You will be directly serving them each time you hit publish, building your relationship and trust, which will eventually lead to more sales. If you publish on too many varied topics, you may lose momentum with your readers if you're only publishing content relevant to them once every few months. And yes, some of this again depends on your monetization model, but even if your goal is to get a lot of traffic to get ads on your site, covering more and more and more topics on your site is usually not the best way to get there. The better strategy is to go deep into one content cluster and firmly establish yourself as an authority on that topic. Get that content ranking well and driving lots of traffic before expanding into another vertical. And I know this reason, not niching down enough, may sound cliche to some of you, but after enrolling over 950 people in my SEO Made Simple program and running monthly office hours calls for many years now, I cannot tell you how many times this specific topic comes up. And I get it. People are excited. They want to write about all the things. They find a good keyword and maybe it's not really related to their niche, but they just can't help themselves. 
but if I visit your website and I cannot immediately tell how you can help me or what you are an expert in, then we have a problem. Reason number three why so many bloggers never make money, they are writing about what they want instead of what their audience wants. And again, this is such a common mistake bloggers make, and it all stems from not understanding SEO or ultimately what the purpose of blog content is. If your goal is to grow your audience with your blog content, then you need to create content that will attract new people to your site. And that means creating content around topics that people are searching for, not around whatever random thought flows through your head on a Tuesday. Yes, I am telling you that it takes intention and strategy to create a content calendar that will bring droves of new visitors to your site each month. It does not happen by accident. I repeat, you will not fall backwards into instant success online with blogging. To see results in a reasonable time frame, and by reasonable, I mean at least a year in, you really need to understand and embrace a concept called keyword research. The idea behind keyword research is that you let data guide your content creation decisions rather than just guessing what topics to write about. There are tools out there that you can use to figure out exactly what phrases, aka keywords, people are typing into the Google search bar, how many times they search for each phrase per month, and how difficult it is to get your content on the first page of the search results for any given query. You can then use that data to find the keywords that best fit into your overall business goals, like we talked about at the beginning of this video. But the key point I want to drive home here is that your blog is not a personal journal. It's a business asset, a marketing tool, and it should be treated as one. The more seriously and strategically you take your content creation, the better results you will get. But lacking a clear keyword research strategy is one of the other biggest reasons why so many bloggers are never able to make money. If they don't understand how to create content that people are searching for and that they can realistically rank for, then they're going to have a very small chance of ever getting their content found through Google search. And just to highlight some examples, when I was food blogging years and years ago, almost a decade ago now, I had no idea what SEO was or how I could use it to grow my blog. I was just publishing recipes based on whatever looked good at the farmer's market, creating really creative stuff that I thought I could maybe get some traction with on social media. I did that for two and a half years. I published one to two recipes every single week. And in the end, I had roughly 150 recipes on my website, but I was never getting more than 2,000 people a month to my website from Google searches. If you do the math, that's actually less than 20 people per recipe per month less than 15 actually. That's a really bad return on my time. In contrast, once I understood how to do keyword research and of course all the other aspects of SEO, I was able to grow a new blog from zero to 20,000 monthly visitors in just 10 months with 10 blog posts. So I went from an average of like 13 people reading each post each month to over 2,000 people reading each post per month. That's over 100 times better results publishing one eighth the amount of content each month. Like bananas, right? That is the power of good SEO. And not understanding keyword research is one of the most common mistakes new bloggers make that holds them back from growing their audience and making money. Reason number four why bloggers aren't making money, they lack a structured content plan. So even if someone has an understanding of how they want to make money, even if they have a clear niche, even if they understand keyword research, it's still common for people to get stuck when coming up with a cohesive content plan that positions them and their website as an authority on a specific set of topics. So the way this most commonly manifests is that people don't take the time to organize the content on their website into clear categories. Instead, they just have one long running stream of posts that's not organized in a helpful way for either their readers or Google. And a strategy that I teach and I've seen good results with is creating content clusters on your website. This involves coming up with a few main categories for your site that you'd like to be seen as an expert on, and then creating clusters of content around that topic. So for each main category, you'll create a solid pillar post that's sort of like the main introduction to the topic. Think of it like what you think your audience could use as an ultimate resource on the topic. So for example, if you are a low FODMAP dietitian, you might have categories on your blog that focuses on each phase of the low FODMAP diet, like the elimination phase, reintroduction phase, 
maybe a long-term maintenance phase or something. And for each of those categories, the idea is to create an ultimate guide on each topic, probably targeting a really high volume, difficult keyword that you currently don't have the authority to rank for. But then you create a cluster of other content in that category around longer tail, easier to rank for keywords that are sort of like the supporting characters on your site. So for example, you'd have a pillar post for the elimination section of your site, possibly titled how to get started on an elimination diet, the ultimate guide or something like that. And then you can have lots of supporting posts on longer tail keywords within that same category, like 10 best low FODMAP pastas or questions like why do I feel worse on a low FODMAP diet or vegetarian low FODMAP tips, etc. Within each of those smaller, more niched down posts in the category, you then link back to the main pillar post so that any backlinks that you're getting to the smaller posts will pass some link juice on to that main post and possibly help you rank for some more competitive head terms in the future. And this structure is also great from a user perspective as well as an SEO perspective. It makes it easy for Google to understand how your content is interconnected and what the most important pieces of content are on your website. And it helps make it well organized by topic when people are browsing around on your site. And I found that a lot of people skip over this step when planning out their content structure on their site and while doing their keyword research and content calendar planning. And if this is something you could use help with, it is a topic I cover inside the site structure section of my SEO Made Simple course and something that we talk about often inside my office hour calls. And I'd love to help you sort this out as a student in my course. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can head over to seofreebie.com and sign up to watch my 100% free masterclass and get an exclusive one-time discount on my course today. Reason number five why people aren't making money blogging They are focused on perfectionism over progress. Yes, this one gets even the best of us sometimes. And I'll be honest, blogging and honestly business in general is a messy game. And getting out there and taking imperfect but consistent action day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year is how you will eventually see success. The real truth is not every blog post you create is going to be a winner. Sometimes you'll have a quick and easy post fly to the top of page one and the traffic will take you by surprise. Other times you'll spend days on some epic post and you're just so sure it's going to rank really well after you publish it, only to have it never quite take off. So the real lesson here is to not get stuck on the minutia of crafting your blog post. Done is better than perfect in almost every case. I recommend picking a realistic publishing frequency, maybe weekly or even bi-weekly at first, and then really committing to sticking to it no matter what. And the nice thing about blog content is that you do get feedback. You don't get instant feedback in the same way you might with social media, but you get very detailed feedback that can help you revamp those posts in the future so that they can rank better and bring you even more traffic. After your post has been live for a few months, you are able to see some data inside a tool called Google Search Console. It's a free tool. If you don't have it set up yet, do that today. Google Search Console will show you what keywords each post has been ranking for and how it's been performing kind of overall. And sometimes you may notice that the post is ranking for some keywords that you didn't actually target in your post, but that could be easily added to help boost the topical authority and help you show up for additional search terms. So I like to think of blog content as a constant work in progress. In fact, I recommend going back through your content on an annual basis and refreshing your posts as needed. If you're curious on how to do that or how that part of the process works, I do have a whole lesson on how to update your content quarterly within my SEO Made Simple course. And as a reminder, you can get access to my course by heading over to seofreebie.com and checking out my free training. But honestly, the main point here is to just get your content out there. Learn from actual experience. Nothing can replace that real world feedback. Done is better than perfect a million percent in the blogging world. Because remember, you will be going back and tweaking, updating, optimizing that content in the future. There is no perfect. Let the real world data tell you what you need to do. Reason number six why bloggers aren't making money, they're winging it alone. If you are listening to this right now and feeling like, man, I do almost all the things on this list, and maybe you're starting to feel overwhelmed, I want you to stop, take a deep breath. First of all, I want to acknowledge that yes, 
blogging is a business and it's a lot of work. There are a ton of moving pieces that need to come together to build a successful content creation strategy rooted in SEO. And while yes, you can certainly teach yourself and learn as you go, I think it's really important to pause for a moment and consider if that's really what will serve you best. Because I can't even tell you how many people have joined my course thinking they know a lot about SEO already, and they're just like mind blown over the things they didn't even know that they didn't know. In fact, I was just reading through some of my feedback surveys and one of my students said that one small strategy tweak that she learned early on in my course was worth every penny that she paid for it because it totally changed the way she was creating content and dramatically improved her ability to rank in Google. And it was a seemingly small thing that she had simply overlooked by trying to do it all herself. There's no need to go it alone. Learn from people who are doing or have done what you aspire to do. Surround yourself with a community of doers who are out there focusing on the same goals as you. Those communities exist. And not to be biased, but I'm obsessed with my own private student community for my SEO Made Simple course. We have a smaller, more intimate Facebook group just for students of my course, where we chat all things blogging and SEO and troubleshoot problems and questions as they arise. It's a super supportive and encouraging space. And in fact, every Friday we share our weekly wins and cheer each other on. And it's absolutely one of my favorite things to read every single week. So honestly, unless you are a really, really, really self-motivated learner and doer, I can almost guarantee that you will reach your goals faster by signing up for more direct guidance through my SEO Made Simple course. It's almost a no-brainer if you think about it. So my course currently costs two or three thousand dollars, depending whether or not you take advantage of my initial discount offer available the first time you watch my masterclass. So you could invest two thousand dollars now and make that back in the first few months after being accepted into an ad network like Mediavine. And then from then on, all the additional ad revenue you earn will be largely profit. And so if you think about the timeline for my students who have made it to Mediavine, it's not unrealistic to think that your initial $2,000 investment could turn into a recurring profit of $2,000 every single month in passive ad revenue in just a few years time. For work that you can do on the side, during nights and weekends, if that's all you have right now, it's really incredible. On the flip side, if you are following the online business model and maybe creating a course that sells passively for, let's say, $500, you can leverage the audience that you're growing through SEO to make those sales. You're only going to need a handful of sales to make back your initial investment. So let's say you work hard for a year or so and you're consistently reaching 10,000 people per month with your SEO optimized website content. If just 2% of those convert over to your email list each month, that's 200 people per month who will be presented with the opportunity to work with you. If you convert, let's say, 3% of those people on your email list each month, that's six new course purchases each month on autopilot once you have your selling systems in place. That's $3,000 per month in passive recurring revenue thanks to the evergreen content that you've published on your site. So long story short, Yes, one of the reasons why some bloggers never make any money is because they're going it alone and they just can't see their own blind spots. Maybe they understand bits and pieces of SEO, but they lack the bigger picture, and so it's just not coming together. So if that resonates with you, know that there is help out there, and I'd love to see you inside my course if you think my teaching style resonates with you. And finally, reason number seven why many bloggers never make any money, they give up too soon. I've said this multiple times already in this video, but I'll say it again, SEO is a long game. It is not unusual to see pretty crappy results for the first six months, even a year, even if you are doing everything from the start. But when things start to take off, we often see hockey stick-like growth. In fact, I can give you a concrete example that might help you feel better. When I launched my nutrition blog in October 2018, that month we got 20 sessions from Google search. The next month we got 62, then 73, 212, then 581, and then 2,743. So you can see it took a solid six months to even break past 1,000 monthly visitors. And that was with publishing one SEO optimized post a month. But from there, things took off quickly. The next month it was 6K, then 16K, then 20K. It was wild. So the point I'm trying to make here is that many, many people give up right before things start to take off. 
Because when you're in the trenches, six months of consistent work can feel like an eternity when it's not really paying off yet. And the tricky part is that it requires some amount of faith and trust that things will work over time if your strategy is on point. But once it starts to flourish, things can grow very rapidly, and it's really, really exciting. So my best advice is to give it one year of solid, strategic, consistent effort. And if it's still not working, then I would recommend hiring someone to go deeper with you. Book an audit and have a neutral third party take a peek at your site and give you some concrete and actionable areas of improvement that you may not have even had on your radar. Because honestly, SEO works when it's done right. So if you believe you've been doing everything right for at least one year and you aren't seeing a solid upward trajectory, then please don't hesitate to reach out to a professional. But if you're still in month one, two, three, four, my advice for you is to just keep going. Even if you've been at this for years and you feel like you're not seeing the results you wish you had, I would still not recommend throwing in the towel completely. Chances are a lot of your content could be reworked and optimized to bring you a lot more traffic than you're currently getting, so don't get discouraged. Everything in life is a learning process, and once you know better, you can start to do better. So that's it for the seven reasons why so many bloggers never make a dime. To recap, those reasons are... Number one, they don't have a clear monetization strategy. Number two, they don't have a clear niche. Number three, they're writing about what they want versus what their audience wants. Number four, they lack a structured content plan. Number five, they're focused on perfectionism over progress. Number six, they're winging it alone. And number seven, they just give up too soon. So if this conversation really moved you to want to do things differently and start to take strategic action with SEO in your business, I would love to invite you to check out my course by watching my free training at seofreebie.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to get notified about great content like this in the future.